when we go through trials and hardships, we nearly always find ourselves asking questions. And whether we believe in God or not, we often find ourselves asking questions of God. Questions like, why is this happening to me? Why is God allowing this? Where is God? Is He going to do something? If God is a God of love, why does He let this happen to me? Why doesn't He intervene? We search for answers. We try to make sense of things. The way that we're wired as humans, we almost demand an answer. We need to be able to make sense of what's happening to us. And today I hope to lead you to a place where you might be able to find an answer to exactly those kinds of questions. And as we do so, we're going to look at two very instructive biblical figures. We're going to look at a man named Job, and then we're going to have a look at Jesus. But let's start with Job. We can learn a lot from this biblical character. You may be familiar with the story. Job was a good man. He was a lover and a worshipper of God. But for reasons we don't really understand, Satan, the great accuser of men and women, appears before God and says to God that Job only loves God because God protects him and blesses him. God says, fine, have at him. And I'm sure that Job will continue to praise me and continue to honour me. And Satan has a go at Job and he loses everything. He loses his family, he loses his wealth, he loses his health. But Job doesn't turn away from God. He doesn't curse God. He doesn't reject God. But he is mystified. He's convinced that this oughtn't be happening to me. And in the book of Job, for 35 long chapters, Job is arguing with his friends that he's innocent and that a great injustice has occurred. He even goes so far as to, to demand the opportunity to present his case before God. He wants to appear before God and say, God, you've got it wrong. I'm a righteous man. I'm a good man. Things like this don't happen to good people. But it is happening, and Job wants an answer. And then, in chapter 38, God shows up. And God effectively says to Job, All right, Job, here's your chance. But before you get started, let me ask you a few questions first. And then it starts off in verse 4. God addresses Job and says, Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. And God questions Job like this for four chapters. Since you're so smart, since you're so knowledgeable, since you're so full of wisdom and understanding, well, come on, give me your answers about the nature of reality. At the end of it, Job is undone. And he says two significant things. In Job 42, verse 3, he says, Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. Job realizes that he's reached and gone past the limits of his own knowledge, and he finds himself humbled and realizing who it is that he has to deal with, the God who holds all of creation in his hand, the God who knows all things, and that Job is a finite, human, fallible creature. But then the second thing he says in verse 5, he says, My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. You see, Job didn't get an answer. He asked his questions. He demanded an answer. But at the end of the day, Job didn't get an answer. Well, at least not the answer he was expecting. In fact, Job dropped his demand for an answer. Why? Because instead of an answer, he got God himself. 